It's Travel Michigan. I'm Dave Lorenz on this uh, beautiful winter day in pure Michigan. And, uh, you know, they always celebrate winter in one place, uh, even when it's not wintertime. And that's at the Muskegon Winter Sports Complex. We're going to bring in Jim Rudisell now. He is executive director of the Muskegon Winter Sports Complex. Jim, uh, the, the sports complex has just been growing by leaps and bounds uh, from from its uh, original setup at the Muskegon State Park. How long ago uh, did that start? Uh, it started in 1984 and 1985, the winter of, and, um, you know, they started off with just some ski trails and a small loose track and, and um a couple portable trailers and some outhouses, and uh, <laughs> we've come a long way since then. Isn't that true? You know, I, I remember doing that luge when it was the smaller luge. It uh, was scary to me then. Uh, I have been to the luge uh, a few times since. It is even scarier to me now. I mean, how do you get people <laughs> over that uh, that uh, kind of fright uh, of, uh, of the luge? Well, um you know, I always tell people, uh, you know, luge is uh, one of the safer winter sports because you're already laying on the ground. You don't have far to fall. But, <laughs> That's uh, true. Um, uh, no, we uh, we pride ourselves in our safety record here uh, with the, the luge track. Um, we, that's our foremost priority. Uh, before anybody goes down the track, we start them off with about a 15-minute instruction period where we have them lay on the sled, show them steering techniques as well as safety things to do, and much like riding a roller coaster, keep your arms and legs in the, you know, within the sled. And, um, but uh, no, we uh, we just put over 300 people down this past weekend, and wow. we we're injury free. So um, that's um, we, we always pride ourselves in that. We should uh, explain. Uh, you know, the luge is different than bobsled and in, in, in some of the other sports. Explain how the luge is and and how people head down that track. Uh, luge is either a one or two man sport here at Muskegon Winter Sports Complex. We uh, practice the singles luge, no doubles luge here. Um, but uh, you got you, basically you have a sled that has two runners with uh, steel along the bottom and a pod. So you sit, um, you know, down and you lay down on the sled, much like lay, laying in a lazy boy, fully <laughs> reclined, and uh, your feet are pointed forward. Uh, going down the track, and you steer with your legs and with um, by you know moving your head and your shoulders. It's funny. I don't have that same restful feeling uh, on that sled as I do on a Lazy Boy. <laughs> right. It's a little different experience. Uh, and in fact, you can go to um, the Muskegon Winter Sports Complex website at msports.org and, and get a, a kind of virtual feel of what that's like. I think that's you on that sled, isn't it? <laughs> just to, yeah, I, just to spoil to, the fun. I have to claim that one. Yeah, that's yep. that's fun. Yeah. Well, it really is. It's a it's a great little uh, YouTube video you have. Yeah. So you know, I, I think a lot of people think of the luge at the Muskegon Sports Complex as kind of like the main activity, uh, or maybe maybe they think of it as the only activity because it's so well known and it's the most accessible of the three luge tracks in in America. Uh, but there's so much more to offer at the sports complex, as I mentioned earlier. Why don't you tell us about some of those other things? There is, Dave, and thanks for asking. There's uh, cross-country ski trails. We have five miles of lighted trails. That is the longest lighted trail system in the Midwest. And those cross-country trails um, traverse through the uh, dunes here at Muskegon State Park. So we have um, everything from beginner terrain to advanced terrain. And... Uh, you know, we, we groom the trails daily. We have uh, the same grooming equipment uh, that was the same brand and type that was used at the Olympics for grooming. So when we do have good snow conditions, uh, we really lay in a beautiful trail for um, Nordic skiers. Um, you know, we have people that visit from all over the Midwest when we have good snow conditions. I, I have to say I've enjoyed that uh, that trail myself, and not only for uh, cross-country skiing, but also for snowshoeing uh, kind of next to the track. You do a little snowshoeing there as well, right? Oh, we do, and actually we've laid out um, an additional 10 kilometers of uh, uh, snowshoe trails, and we have one trail in particular that's um, becoming very popular, and we call that the Lake Michigan Snowshoe Trail, and that takes place through most of the dune tops here through the park and along the ridges and there's some amazing sight lines of Muskegon Lake and Lake Michigan um, as well as the interdunal pond uh, back there that we call Lost Lake so there's some really great uh, outlooks and um, just it's a great way to experience Muskegon State Park in the winter. Now, do you get that because um, I know that's a bog back there do you get that kind of motion even in the winter time or is it all frozen up you don't really get much motion at all? 
Uh, yeah, it's it's frozen up in the winter time. Probably um, a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably good. Right. Um, well, for the cross country track, um, is it all inline sk- uh, skiing, or do you have a skate skiing uh, trail as well? Uh, yes, we do have skate skiing. Uh, we we have wide enough trails that we groom for both classical and skate ski um, uh, technique. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, we we have uh, enough rentals here uh, for the Nordic ski. Um, program the traditional classic style um, to outfit you know about a hundred people at a time so mm. we always uh, uh, we can keep uh, keep people on skis here pretty well with the crowds and uh, the skate skis we have some a um, uh, product that came out with about 15 years ago called the revolution ski so we have a few pair of skate skis and it's not you know the the a thousand dollar set but it's the uh, it's it's a good introductory uh, set of skate skis so that, you can come and learn that we offer also offer lessons as well yeah that's actually a good thing to hear because skate skiing really is different for people who are used to that traditional inline cross-country skiing skate skiing is uh i don't know i find it very difficult my son who is also a uh, skateboarder found it very easy and very natural for him so it's uh, just you know what style you're looking for yeah for your listeners if you've if you're um, an alpine you know downhill skier you know, it's really the same motion almost when you get to the bottom of the hill and you traverse back to the lift. Mm-hmm. It's that, you know, it's really just to give you a, a picture in your head. It's that traversing. Pushing um, off from that, the sides, kind right, of. Exactly. Or, or falling forward, as a friend of mine likes to say. <laughs> so, you know, so, you, you know, we have the luge, you have the uh, snowshoe, the cross-country, lighted trail, all fantastic. Um, I know there's there's hockey that you play there as well. Yes, Dave. We have over two acres of outdoor ice skating space now. It's it just grows every year, and we we find another spot to lay in a little more ice. Um, so we have over two acres of uh, um, outdoor ice skating space with um, areas set aside for figure skaters just, and just family skaters, and then we have some hockey areas that are set up as well, just for a traditional pickup game of hockey. Um, and one of the coolest things we added about six years ago is a quarter-mile ice skating trail through the woods. Exactly. I I, I think that is so cool, and it's so unique. I don't know of any place anywhere that that has this trail. Tell us more about that. Yeah, the trail, um, it's positioned in a, uh, we laid it out in a figure eight, and um, it is lit at night, and, you know, I I call it the... uh, the uh, lover's trail sometimes it hmm. seems like there's a lot more couples holding hands skating side by side skating through the trail out there so um but uh yeah it's uh it's become very popular we have folks coming here specifically to skate the trail so um, i can see that in fact i've also seen young couples uh hand in hand skating along that kind of meandering trail that goes through those beautiful oaks and uh nice thing about that trail is it, it does kind of um uh, go on a it's it's not just a circle you know it's a kind of a winding trail that yeah. meanders through the woods it's it's a beautiful layout it is is yes. that is that lighted as well that is lit as well and uh uh, we actually hope to reopen that uh, tomorrow afternoon. Very good. Yeah, because of the weather has been a little challenging. So uh, it's good to see that the cold weather has uh, finally kicked in and the snow is there for you as well. So plenty of opportunities. There is a- actually an area very close to the sports complex where I see people do a lot of sledding, and that's at the old block house at the state park as well. So there's there's really something for everybody if somebody's looking to do some, some fun outdoor activities in wintertime can't think of a better place than to recommend you check out the Muskegon Winter Sports Complex. Jim, thank you so much for joining us today. Jim Rudisell, Executive Director of the Muskegon Winter Sports Complex. And for more information, all you have to do is go to msports.org. Don't forget you need your your uh, state park passport to get into the park, and then there's um, a fee to enjoy some of the other activities at the park as well. Well, that's it for today. We'd like to thank uh, Mark Blackwell for engineering today's program. And on behalf of my colleagues, George Zimmerman, also my boss, and Michelle Banash, I'd like to thank you for joining us today and uh, invite you to join us next week as well, right here on Travel Michigan, where your trip begins at michigan.org.